We'll show you the full process of woolen thread manufacturing, as well as glass, plastic, and waste material thread production and use. So how exactly is a simple thread made? This is where it starts, by thoroughly combing animal hair, the professional term for his top. Top is unwound and blended, or malong, as they say here. Do you remember the labels on your clothes? 50% wool, 50% acryl. The entire process of blending, malonging of wool or other materials takes place here. This is not a thread yet. Now it's more like a band. Then it is stretched out and becomes, take a guess, 10 times longer. No, 100 times longer than it was initially. It is incredible that the yarn can endure such strain, but if it is steamed, and one more professional term, greased with a special composition, a band can be stretched out almost to infinity. This is semi-finished. One strand of roving is divided in two and wound while controlling the strain into cops, as they call it here. A thread should not only be thin, but also quite long. That's why the following step is its extension. Three cops are merged into one thread. And that is a doubling and twisting machine. Here a future thread is doubled. This term means that several threads are wound into one reel, into parallels without twisting. And then the threads from different reels are finally entwined. By the way, there are about a hundred kinds of twisting techniques. So everything is ready. The threads are of required length and thickness, though they are wound too tight in this bobbin. They are rewound to release tension. Phew, that took some time. We need some rest. And believe it or not, the threads need it as well. They go to a steam chamber, kind of a sauna. They are under the influence of water vapors. The thread turns soft, fluffy, and light. In other words, it takes the shape of a thread we are all familiar with. Well then, we've seen the process of thread manufacturing. Now, we can wrap up the show. Wait a second, what did I say in the beginning of the show? Threads are used not just to make clothes, but also as construction material, not to mention data transmission channels. All right, and meanwhile, let's look at the threads from which door and window frames, panels, ground effects, tubes, sport equipment, cupels, swimming pools, and boats are made. This is a well-known material found practically everywhere. I'm talking, of course, about glass fiber plastic. Glass fiber plastic is a light composite material. It's corrosion resistant. That's why it's employed to make boats, for example. It withstands fluctuations of temperature from minus 60 to plus 80 degrees Celsius. One of the reasons it's suitable for construction. We compare two constructions of the same shape and of similar strength. One made from glass fiber plastic and the other one from steel. The first one will be nearly twice lighter than the latter. And the main advantage of this material is how cheap it is to produce. Let's look at words the term is made up of. Glass, fiber, plastic. It means that the material consists of two substances, glass and plastic. You must have thought, why would you lump everything together? What do threads have to do with it? 
The point is that the glass is turned into threads, these glass balls to be more precise. Why balls? First of all, this is a standardized shape. Secondly, they are better for transportation and speed up the process when on a conveyor belt. The conveyor belt brings the glass balls to a furnace. Remelting is the first step of the glass to thread transformation process. So, the temperature inside the furnace is higher than 1,300 degrees. The balls melt, turn into a thick liquid which, through gravity, trickles down into tiny holes. These are real glass threads. They are also greased by a substance right here. It is called a sizer, and they become strong and elastic. They are so elastic that they can be wound on a bobbin, like a simple sewing thread. These long fibers are called filaments. But we are only in the middle of the task at hand so to speak. Later, this semi-finished item should turn into a final product. But not just a product, but several different products, up to four to be more precise. But in reality, there exists even more options. Here, they produce only four fiberglass products. Well then. If we soak the glass fibers in Epoxy, for example, add some paint, press them, it will result in several strong and light construction items. By the way, that is exactly how hockey sticks are made. This process is similar to making reinforced concrete structures, but there are glass fibers instead of reinforcement, which are dipped into plastic instead of linking solution. And if we press the fibers covered with linking, we get these sheets. They are used, amongst other things, to produce boats and yachts. There is another product made from glass fiber plastic. The fibers are cut into tiny pieces. It is called glass wool. But this wool also contains plastic. All that goes under the press. As a result, we get a tray like this, very solid. And finally, the fourth product, and it is made entirely from glass threads, not from glass fiber plastic. It is glass cloth. There are many ways to use it as it is moisture resistant, hard wearing, long lasting, and non-flammable. Just look, it suits but doesn't burn. As it is, at bottom, it's a glass fabric. What is optic fiber? These threads, light conductors made from a very unusual kind of glass. This too is a future light conductor. Moreover, it is made from ultra pure glass. When it is melted down, the silicon, the germanium, the mixture of gases are added. As a result, we have this workpiece. In fact, it is made up of two types of glass, one inside the other. The ultra pure is inside and the one with a higher refractory index is outside. And just another short detour, it'll be the last, I promise. How can light be transmitted over great distances through the light conductor? This happens thanks to a process called internal reflection. If we shine a light on a glass cylinder at a certain angle long enough, it will do the following. Light will reflect off the side. In science, it is called total internal reflection. When electromagnetic waves reflect off the boundary of two medium. In case of total internal reflection, the light almost fades out. And it means that it can be transmitted over very long distances. And it means it is suitable for all communicating needs. Our 
workpiece of a future light conductor is placed into a furnace. It is an extraordinary 12 meter high construction. Let's have a look. Up top, the temperature is high. The workpiece is melted down and trickles under its own weight, turning into a thin and, what is important, flexible glass thread. The rate of extension influences the thickness of the thread. It's necessary that it should be a bit wider than a human hair, 125 microns approximately. The finished fiber is covered with a layer of protective polymer. The last thing to check, how well it conducts light. Optic fiber threads can transmit the signal almost in a flash, over thousands of kilometers. The signal won't get lost. It is resistant to interference. Optic fiber abilities haven't been fully explored yet. The experiments with different materials and different light wavelength are still being carried out. And who knows what else these threads are capable of. As it always happens in such cases, we didn't have enough time to tell you everything there is to know about threading. The topic is just way too broad, but you will get to see more thread-related experiments as we will be carrying more of them out on experiments.